starting next week we are going to be dropping top 10 takes every single tuesday on a different theme every single week this week what do we got for top 10 takes it's taking a look back at nxt roadblock from last night quite a show um i don't remember an episode of nxt uh, with so much stuff going on, it was absolutely jam-packed with tons of content and build for Stand In Deliver, WrestleMania Weekend, and uh, just a lot of stuff to talk about coming out of this show. Um, generally speaking, I thought this was a pretty good show, especially if you're speaking of a, a build to something bigger. There wasn't anything on this show that was uh, in terms of the in-ring with the exception of the main event, which I thought was pretty strong work in the ring. Nothing really completely stood out from an in-ring perspective that made you uh, be like kind of must-see. Um, although the main event was definitely something I think everybody should check out and we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, overall, it was more of a largely uh, built show to lead to Stand and Deliver uh, as a kind of a, a starting point or a road to Stand and Deliver, as it were. But uh, let's get into the top 10 takes on this Roadblock show from last night. Uh, quite a, like I said, quite a loaded show with just stuff going on up and down the board on this show. A lot of stuff didn't even make the top 10 takes here. Um, here are some things that didn't make the top 10 takes, but yet were uh, notable things from this show. Uh, the Tiffany Stratton intro for the show. This obviously is going to lead to her probably getting the title at Stand In Deliver. I, I assume that's the direction that they're going to be going with here. Uh, Tiffany Stratton and uh, either Roxanne Perez or question mark we'll talk about that in a little while um other things that didn't get covered on the top 10 takes the gal is pretty deadly promo uh and then subsequent brawl it was okay it was okay just didn't make the top 10 they're obviously going to be having a match at stand in deliver they have a, a long standing feud even from back in nxt uk so a lot of history there for sure uh the dragon off promo Vignette that was not uh, on the top 10 takes, although that was strong. Obviously, they're going to be doing Dragon Off and JD McDonough at Stand and Deliver. Uh, by and large, everything seemed to be pretty set for this show, uh, for the big WrestleMania weekend show from this uh, roadblock event. Uh, other things to know, I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, DC and Andre Chase did not make the top 10 takes as well. Although it was a, a, an okay match. Uh, they had the storyline going on there. A few, a few different storylines, actually. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't make the top 10 takes. But let's get into it. Top 10 takes. NXT Roadblock. And right now, number 10, this storyline with Kiana James, Brooks Jensen, Fallon Henley, uh, Josh Briggs. You know, when this first started, I was, I was hating, 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 hating on this stuff. I thought it was terribly lowbrow. I thought it was going nowhere. It didn't have much potential. Even when they put the, the NXT tag titles on, Keanu James and Fallon Hill, I thought, oh, they're just doubling up on a bad idea. As it, as it ended up being, at least at this point, I'm intrigued on where this storyline is going 
Uh, because obviously now we have an element of, of somebody else is involved here with uh, Keanu James and and there's a whole lot of drama surrounding that certainly that's going to be coming on down the road. So consider me intrigued now by this. I'm not ex completely uh, turning my eyes away from the TV when these these segments would happen on NXT. They had a couple of them on this show and I'm sure they'll be having a couple more next week and I would guess... This is all going to come to a head at Stand and Deliver when the uh, mystery person of Keanu James is probably going to be re revealed on some level. How about number nine? We get into the matches on the show. Um, besides what I mentioned with the Gacy Andre Chase match, um, this match kind of stood out to me as surprisingly not strong, and the crowd was not very behind this one either, which is surprising as well. And that's the Gigi Dolan JC Jane match, which. Uh, going into it, I thought maybe it was going to be more of an angle to build to match a stand and deliver, but they did the match straight forward. Uh, there was a little bit of shenanigans for sure. Dolan won, and I get the impression this feud definitely isn't over following the post match. They're probably going to have another match with these two at stand and deliver, probably some sort of gimmick attached. Uh, some sort of hardcore match, street fight kind of gimmick of some sort. But for the first match out between these two former Toxic Attraction members, I was surprisingly not impressed. I thought this should have been something much more significant than it ended up being. How about number eight? Another match that uh, was okay, but didn't really completely draw me in was uh, the Creed Brothers and Braun Breaker against Indu Sher and Jinder Mahal. It was okay. They had some good moments, good energy in the match. The crowd was much more into this match than, for instance, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. Uh, it was what it was. It was a nice uh, a moment to really get over both baby faces and Drawn Breaker and the Creed Brothers, and also as kind of a trios team. They seem to have some uh, some decent chemistry together as well, which means a lot going forward in NXT. How about number seven? We're going to talk about yet another match in comparison. To the other two, I think the Donovan Dijak match with D'Angelo, uh, that jailhouse match, that had something to it. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a bit, a bit hokey at times. Some of the spots were a bit kind of like, really, they just went there and did that. But on the other hand, there was some tremendous spots in this match, high spots. And the match was weighed out decently, I thought. Hey, for a first jailhouse match in WWE, not too bad, not too bad at all. Finish was a bit salty on my end, but um, it, that's probably why it's still a little bit higher on the list. But I thought the, the ring work was generally there. Dijak worked his ass off. Tony D'Angelo is Tony D'Angelo. I don't really care for the dude. I don't really see any really tremendous upside there, but is what it is. Uh, however, tremendous upside is in number six. Dragon Lee showed up on this show. He had been signed by NXT. Gosh, it's been seemingly at least a few months. It's been since that big last Triple uh, Triple A show where he essentially announced he had signed with NXT like right after beating FTR with uh, former Sin Cara Callistico. So he showed up here and really didn't do anything. He was just in the crowd. That typical appearance that you'd usually see at a NXT TakeOver. Ended up here on Roadblock. Wonder if we're going to see actual uh, a match with Dragon Lee, perhaps, at Stand and Deliver. That's my big question coming out of that one there. How about number five, the Grayson Waller effect segment with Shawn Michaels. I got to say, I was intrigued. It was I was hooked by the promo work. Uh, the storyline has certainly got some Swiss cheese plot holes, I will say. Uh, there was a lot of insider lingo in this promo between Waller and Michaels. But boy, uh, seeing Shawn Michaels back in the storyline is a little bit fun for the brand. Um, we're going to talk about something else relating to Shawn Michaels uh, down the road on this Top 10 Takes. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, but uh, we'll get into it in a second. But this segment was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought Michaels brought the, uh, the promo work back at Waller. Waller had his own as well. Um, I certainly don't think we're ever going to see a match between these two, but I certainly think there's an opportunity for a spot or two uh, here or there with these these uh, 
the situation where maybe Michaels will uh, constantly be maybe almost like I hate to draw this comparison because it's not really, I shouldn't even go here, but, you know, the boss and the disgruntled worker thing, the Austin and McMahon thing, on a completely different level here. There is nothing like that whatsoever, but the the, the idea of this disgruntled worker and the boss kind of storyline, that's what we got going on here. Uh, number four, this was hard uh, to place where exactly I put this match, but the main event with Satomura and Roxanne Perez Roxy. I put it in number four because there was there was some strong stuff uh, on the show besides that main event. And that main event was solid work for sure. But some of the stuff after this, we'll talk about in a second, just was that much better. But I'm glad you're waiting to see that main event. I think it was really a solid match. Uh, Satomura and Roxy... Good shit for sure for the main event at number four. Number three was the Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes promo. Damn, this was good. Uh, probably the best one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of promo I've actually seen in NXT uh, since the reboot at least for sure. Both of these guys stepped up in the promo department to make this promo special to set that match for Roadblock. For the NXT title, Carmelo, Braun Breaker. I can smell a title change a mile away on this one. So I think Braun Breaker is probably going to show up Raw after Mania for sure. As one of those call-ups coming out of Mania. But setting, setting up this match was a fucking fantastic promo, let me just say. Um, I just thought they how they bridged the past and the history and the upstart of the brand... And where they were at in in the midst of it all, uh, I just thought whoever set this promo up and and they had these talking points and stuff, a fucking two thumbs up for you because this was an excellent promo to set up that main event for Stand and Deliver. Uh, speaking of excellent, uh, excellent surprise that I did not see coming from a mile away was the Johnny Gargano surprise showing up again at Grayson Waller. Shawn Michaels match, Michaels announced Waller's appoint, uh, appointment for a stand-in deliver, and out comes Johnny Wrestling making his return to NXT to a huge pop. Uh, I guess this makes sense why Gargano went over Balor on Raw as well, although strangely enough, ba um, Gargano was kind of buried in Edge's promo on Raw. That's a whole other weird thing. I don't know if one has to do with the other. It's just so weird why they did that. Um, but here we are. Johnny Organo is back in NXT. That's going to be his big match, WrestleMania weekend, obviously. I don't foresee he's going to be having much of a spot on the WrestleMania card. So similar, I guess, Dolph Ziggler last year with Stan and Deliver. He's going to get this spot here in a big match with Grayson Waller. at Stan and Deliver. Definitely looking forward to that one. Full show. How about number one? Number one is as you would expect that big angle at the end of Roadblock, right out of the page of Shawn Michaels. Like I said, another major angle that Michaels was involved in in his career, the collapsing angle. I believe this would have been 1995 if I'm, if I'm doing it right in my head. With a match with Owen Hart, Michaels collapsed. This was on a Raw, and they built a storyline from there with Shawn Michaels. And this was right out of that. After the Michael Satamora match with Roxanne Perez, Perez and Satamora are kind of embracing, and Roxy takes that collapse almost verbatim from Shawn Michaels. I'm sure she got a lot of tips on how to properly do the collapse. And uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. Everything on, uh, on the presentation, they were selling it hard. Obviously, it was a work. Uh, what does this mean exactly? One of two things. Either Roxy is going to be going in to stand and deliver with, a, I guess, a handicap of sorts with this situation. They're going to use that as a storyline to probably get the title offer and over to Tiffany Stratton at that event. That situation or scenario. One, the other scenario would be completely that she is injured and can't compete any further 
this could be a, a way to have them effectively take the title off of Roxanne Perez without her losing it at all. That may be the more likely scenario here. They take her off of NXT. They call her up after WrestleMania. Possibly. I don't know. I would think one of those two scenarios is what's going to go down. But I have to say, they did a great job, similar to the Jey Uso Sami Zayn angle on Monday. They did a really good job here with the way they sold this angle at the end of Roadblock with Roxy uh, kind of collapsing, passing out from uh, the brutality of that match with Mako Satamura. So, good shit all around. This was one of the more notable, like I said, NXT episodes uh, so far since the uh, 2.0 reboot. Uh, as far as just stuff going on, just a, a litany, as you heard in Top 10 Takes, a litany of stuff happening on this show. And all around, I, I did like the show. I'd probably go about a B-plus on it. I thought for for just uh, leading into Stand and Deliver, they really kind of hit a, a, a couple of home runs here, definitely with that Gar Gar Gargano surprise, the Roxy angle at the end, the main event, the Waller HPK segment. I mean, just we could go on and on on all the successes on this show. And, of course, that Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes promo. My God, that was so good. Really Excellent roadblock. Looking forward to stand and deliver a little more than I was prior to this show. So mission accomplished by NXT on this one. All right, everybody about to watch uh, AEW Dynamite tonight. Uh, we do not have the usual Wednesday stuff, which is going to be starting next Wednesday, midweek matchups where we talk about all the best matches of the previous week. The first episode next Wednesday will be a look at the first half of March and everything with it. All the best matches of the month. And we may even talk about a couple of the worst matches of the month so far on midweek matchups next Wednesday. Coming up later this week as well, more than likely tomorrow, I might be able to get a rant in on a ranch respective level. We'll see what I can conjure up for that. But if not... For sure, Wednesday versus Impact Wrestling versus Ring of Honor. This will be episode two of Ring of Honor against the uh, second episode from Las Vegas of that Impact taping I talked about and I was a part of. So come on back for that later in the week here, for sure, on a Friday. And you might have, like I said, something dropping tomorrow, retrospective. Weekend coming around, we got... Laying the round down, we'll talk about all the latest insider news on Saturday, Sunday, Wrestling Roundup, where I take a rewind look at all of the shows of the previous week, throw my thoughts down and a quick grade on each show, and there we go, Wrestling Roundup on Sunday, so be looking forward to that as well. So come on back here later in the week for some more Wrestling Rants! And coming up next week, it's going to be every day of the week, a rant. And in addition, in between all these different rants, be on the lookout for some rant perspective, I guess I'll call videos. Uh, some of the best videos I had on my other channel, which has now been kind of seemingly permanently disabled. Uh, there was from 2000 January all the way up to around all out of last year. A lot of content that I dropped on that channel for, in terms of um, live event videos that I do have some archived and I'm going to drop and re-release them on this channel for y'all. Stuff from the Jericho Cruise, stuff from Wrestlemania last year, all out 2021 with that tremendous Adam Cole and Brian Danielson entrances at the end of that show. Um, SummerSlam 2021 Vegas, Forbidden Door last year, Double or Nothing. Oh, I still got all the All Out videos and a lot of other indie shows in between. So uh, be on the lookout for those coming up down the road. I'll be dropping them in random times and uh, random situations. So be on the lookout for that. Till later. Come on back and see you around later in the week. Bye, Samo. Wrestling!